Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing work on our Invest Arms Gemmer Hawken kit by adding some of Jim Kibler's Bone Black to the stock to give this a little bit more of an aged appearance. If you remember at the beginning of the series, I talked about using some historic pieces, some original muzzleloaders as inspiration for this kit and how you can use it for inspiration on your own kit at home to give you some ideas. Uh, and one of the things that we wanna to do to make it look a little bit more like the original that we're basing this on is to add some of this bone black to simulate some of the wear that a muzzleloader sees over its time out in the woods, out in the mountains, on the frontier, or really just kind of in your gun safe, you know, for a lot of us now, or hanging on the wall, you know. With bone black, this is gonna add some nice dark shadows, some nice contrast in high wear areas. That's where we wanna target our placement of this. So those high wear areas, kind of on the cheek rest, around the wrist where it's held, around the lock and the breech, and maybe some a little bit up on the forend. Uh, kind of the places where your skin, when it's oily and dirty, when you're carrying your muzzleloader, is gonna contact your stock and rub off a little bit on that stock. Over here at my bench now, I've got everything that we need. I've got a, a cheap two inch hardware store brush. I think in Jim's video, he uses a one inch brush. Um, I've got a plastic container here, both a lid and the basin itself, along with my bone black. Now, I encourage you to check out Jim's video. I'm not gonna be able to cover it as professionally as he can. I don't have the amount of experience that he does, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna go about this. And in his video, he uses a piece of scrap metal as kind of a base layer to support his bone black and oil mixture. So my oil that I'm using is just my natural finished Danish oil from Watco. It's the same oil we've been using for everything else with this kit, and I use it on a lot of my kits. It's a nice neutral oil, uh, I find. What we wanna do is sprinkle a little bit of our bone black onto our lid here, and we're gonna pick up a little bit of that oil with the bone black at the same time. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this in, just kinda of like that, see if that's enough for us. Just gently tapping that out. And again, this is kind of one of those steps I feel like where you're kind of getting back into art class in school a little bit. So I'm picking up my oil some. And what I mean by that is it's best to start with just a little bit and then go from there. You don't want to waste your materials. So that's pretty wet. Get some more. And I'm just treating this like I'd be mixing a pigment where I've got my powder and I've got my, my oil there. And we're just gonna we're just gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna just kind of jump into it here. One of the areas that Jim talked about and that we see especially on the original that I'm looking at for this piece. I'm just gonna dab that a little bit on my, on my apron there. And back here at this toe. Because it's down in the dirt a little bit. You can see there we're already adding a bit of darkness to that. Now, I am seeing, I think the material is a little abrasive on my lines. So I want to be a little careful as I'm applying this. Now, because I want kind of a uniform uh, wear pattern on this uh, to be a little bit more natural on either side. I'm going to flip it over and do the same areas on this side. It looks like we just need a little bit more of that powder. I don't remember the cost of, of Jim's bone black, but 
Um, I bought it for my Southern Mountain Rifle and didn't end up using it. I didn't want to cover up the beautiful cherry. Thank you, Jim, for that. But, you know, it's the kind of thing that can just sit on your shelf for a while. And you can use it on something else. So I'm just dabbing that on. Just like that. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to layer on this stock. We don't want to go necessarily whole hog right out the gate, which got a little, it's a little dark there. It's okay. I'm going to kind of come underneath here. Yeah, I think I might have it a little too wet, but that's okay. We're just, we'll be okay. I want to come underneath this cheek rest here and I'm going to hit that concave surface underneath our cheek rest too. Make sure I come up. Kind of along that edge. You can see that's really darkening underneath there. But look at the depth that we're, we're getting with that too. So it's covering up our line some here, but we can see that layering and as this dries, that's going to change a little bit in the light. With something like bone black, we hear a lot about, you know, just treating it like your other oiled finishes that you have. It's kind of, kind of, we're going to, you're going to layer it. You know, you're going to, you're going to do three or four coats. Before you get the look that you want, and don't get don't get frustrated if uh, you're not getting there, you know, in your first couple coats. It takes it's going to take a little bit. So I'm coming over here and kind of accenting behind that lock mortise or the side plate mortise there. I'm coming up underneath my trigger some. Kind of thinking this like this in a sculptural sense, <laughs> and maybe that's silly, but those areas where we have these planes kind of going underneath each other and going around, adding some of that bone black in there really gives them some depth and some shadow. I mean, it's three dimensional, so it's really already got shadows. I'm gonna layer up here where my lock where the, really the action of the lock is because over time that priming powder is going to come in here and it's going to darken up this area of the wood as the wood absorbs both some of the chemicals from your powder here and there but also your oils that you're using to clean around your lock it's always important to reference those original pieces but also think about the high wear areas. You can see there already how much this stock is changing and how different it looks. I'm varying up my strokes too as I'm doing this and that's allowing me to blend and get some good variation in my strokes. You don't want to make the same direction stroke the whole time because then you're going to be really be able to see your strokes. It's going to look a little bit more unnatural. Notice I'm not, <laughs> I'm not using my brush to get oil directly out of my jug or even the container that I use when I'm just applying it to wood. The, when I'm just applying the oil to wood, I'll use this container as an intermediary between the container, the full jug and the piece of wood I'm applying it to, but I don't want to get this bone black in here because I want to use this later. So think about that as you're in your shop 
And maybe that's something really basic. That, you know, always keep in mind wanting to keep keep your items and, and your equipment clean, especially when you're working with with your stains and oil. So notice there, I, I was I was applying it with the axis with the stock, and then I came in here and kind of blended it coming the other way. I really like this part. <laughs> when you get to this kind of stage with whatever you're building, you can really start to see it come together. I think that's really exciting. I think that's pretty good for our first round. Kind of see the light makes it a little difficult, but you can see we've kind of hit those high traffic areas. And it's interesting, in, in some of these areas where I've applied the oil, it's taken that ink off a little bit from our lines. So that's something we want to keep in mind, maybe as we're applying more of this. So that's neat. As this is drying, we can take a little piece of Scotch-Brite. And we can come in here and hit some of these high areas and reestablish some highlights in that carving. So while we have the simulated wear and age of the bone black, we can also bring back those highlights on those edges where those edges would be worn and, and get used a little bit more than, the, than some of the flats. And I'm being real gentle just trying to hit just those edges. Just We want that nice crisp highlight line as we go around there. After applying a light second coat to accent some of the contrast, this is the result we have on our stock. You can see it's quite a bit darker than it was after we applied just the ink lines, but we've got, I think in my opinion, more of a rich walnut look with this. Really more reminiscent of kind of what I was going for. And this is really just application of oil and that bone black. There's not been anything else added to the stock to give us this different color here. You can see I've kind of got some areas of that light still showing there, especially on that butt stock. Added quite a bit on the wrist and we have more of that light color up in the fore stock. And then around here in the back, it's still just a little sticky. We're gonna let it dry for a couple days before we do much else. But you can see there on the cheek rest, we have some light color and we have some light color back here towards the butt stock. And I tried to replicate the same pattern really on both sides here. So we have a little bit of a darker area around our wrist and our side plate face here. It gets a little lighter and then we get nice and dark up towards the nose or we'd have our nose cap in our entry pipe. All in all, I'm really pleased with how this went, especially for my first go. It's kind of fun adding this bone black and I had to kind of restrain myself a little bit to not do more just because I was really enjoying the look that I was getting out of this. But uh, as you can see, it got really dark really fast. So I think in the future, I could probably go a little bit lighter with my pigment and oil and do a few coats rather than just the two that I did on this kit. But um, I'm really super pleased with how this is looking. This doesn't really look any more like an off the shelf production stock. I hope this serves an example to you as to how far you can take one of these production kits. Uh, in the next video now, we're gonna be putting the pieces back together, trying to see now what this looks like as a completed Gammer Hawken, and then we'll be applying a few more coats of oil to get this finished up and done. Once again, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. If you'd like to see some up close pictures of this, if you're not getting enough from the video, check out ilovemuzzleloading.com. I'll have a link to the blog post for this specific video in the first link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.